Hey everybody, today in this two minute video, we're gonna be looking at the main uses of reverb, just really the setup of it. There's really three typical ways of using reverb in different situations. The first one is putting it on an individual track. Uh, I could put a reverb directly on that instrument, then that instrument gets processed by this reverb. We typically want the dry signal uh, near 100% and the wet signal 50% or below, uh, but we can adjust that as needed. The next thing that we can do is use the sends. So you can see in this particular project, I've got eight different tracks all sent over bus number four, and the aux input over here is an input of bus four and the reverb is on that. And then this reverb now is the reverb for all of those eight tracks. One useful thing to note is that the aux channels are created by default when you add a bus on any of the sends on the other channels. And in this situation, the dry signal should be pulled automatically down with the wet signal up. So you don't have to necessarily change the wet to dry ratio and you don't have to create the aux track. It's real easy to mix this, then you can adjust the little knobs right here. You can turn on the sends on fader option and your faders become the sends so you can mix reverb that way. Uh, the last way that we sometimes are using reverb is when we're doing track stacks. Let's do a summing stack. On the actual summing track now, I could put a reverb and now all of these vocals would be going through that reverb. The best way is the way that's gonna work in the situation you need. Uh, all of them are valid and uh, you can actually create new ways of doing this and uh, it would be valid because I don't think there's any rules that can't be broken. This is uh, one of those things we use in every mix. I think that having a good understanding of how to use it is important and uh, that's where we're gonna end this video.